case study before we'll go to discussion um, is the Dean of the School of Design and Environment at the National University of Singapore, Heng Che Kiang. Sorry for the horrible pronunciation. Of <laughs> thank you. That was pretty good. Um, I must just thank um, LSE as well as uh, the, the Deutsche Bank um, for inviting me here and sharing some of the uh, uh, experience that um, we had in Singapore and as well as to enjoy this beautiful city of Mumbai. Um, I must admit that I wear another hat at the Urban Redevelopment Authority as its board member and chairs a couple of uh, committees there, including the Design Advisory Committee. So I, I do speak with some um, uh, knowledge of uh, the inner workings. Um, first, some basic data. Um, we are, we are in the middle of a, a region of about 500 million people and within seven hours flight from a, a radius of a, of a market of 2.8 billion people. We have practically no agriculture, so are uh, very, very different from most of the countries that, in fact, all the countries that we know of, almost. Um, service makes up two-thirds of the economy, and we have uh, a GDP of 31,000 US dollars. Um, as you can see, we are a city-state, uh, a nation-state, uh, island state, rather, um, and our limits clearly defined by the sea and the straits around us, um, had been both our, uh, our disadvantage and as, as it turned out in terms of um, planning an advantage as well. Um, we have 700 square kilometers and still growing. Um, the area has increased by 12% since the 60s. Um, we are currently 4.6 million population, hoping to achieve 6.5 million recently announced by the Prime Minister, um, and we're a cosmopolitan society. Um, well, if you, if you go to the homepage of uh, the Ministry of National Development, the, the, the vision is to make Singapore an enduring home and a distinctive global city. And um, if you now go to the uh, website of Urban Redevelopment Authority, it says to make Singapore a great city to live, work, and play in. So it is a very people-oriented, um, endearing home, a great city to live, work, and play. Um, let me sort of start the story with uh, what Singapore used to be in, uh, in the 60s when I was a little kid. Uh, we had high population growth of 4%, 13% unemployment. About 600,000 people live in slums and, uh, and uh, squatter areas uh, on the city fringe. Um, over the last 40 years, some of the challenges and uh, problems faced in the 60s, of course, the severe housing shortage, the slums, the overcrowding, and I think the solutions which were implemented then was a very, very aggressive public housing program that provided 54,000 units of uh, flats in five years. Uh, I would do, uh, I, highlighted the, I highlighted this in yellow so that I can go a bit into detail later. Um, and uh, we also, um, with the help of another board, uh, EDB, uh, the Economic Development Board, uh, we went also into a very aggressive program of industrialization where we allocated 12 um, square kilometers of industrial land. In, and um, in the 60s, we begin to formulate a strategic plan, a, a concept plan, and I'll deal with that a bit later. Um, 70s, um, the concept plan was slowly, concept plan and uh, master plan was then implemented. Um, and in the 80s, we were the challenges were really to provide a better environmental uh, quality and quality of life. And we put in place traffic management um, over and above, of course, the building of roads, the, 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 construct, the construction of a, of, a, of a highway network system, etc. And we also look into the importance of urban design and public realm and conservation. Um, I wouldn't deal with the 90s in the, in the, in the last 10 years, but let's look at some of those things I've highlighted. Um, the first um, vision and planning and uh, development process. I think in the, in the case of Singapore, um, we are fortunate to uh, have a clean, uh, corruption-free, strong and good government with 
almost absolute control over land. When it started um, in the, uh, uh, just after the Second World War, the government, um, at that time the, the British government, uh, probably owned about 50, uh, uh, state, state land ownership was probably about 45% thereabouts. But currently, um, the government has under its control 90% of Singapore's land. Um, and of course, I said 12% of, of which um, came control. from the sea. The island state also make it such that once we have solved our own um, urbanization problem, problems um, by providing housing, etc., to the to the resident population, we are in absolute control of the the boundaries and uh, the kind of rural um, urban migration that are typical of a lot of um, cities in the world uh, is absent in, in that in that sense, um, and. Probably also because of this, we, we, we can almost make planning work. Um, we're sort of like a, a planning uh, laboratory. So um, we have concept plans every 10, 10 years, review of uh, master plan every five years, and coordinated uh, land sales and development. And let's look at the public housing program. Um, it is really one of the uh, major programs that I think broke the backbone of uh, poverty. Um, very aggressive after independence, 54,000 flats. By 1970, 36% of the population lived in it. Uh, right now, it's closer to 85. Um, and the, the quality of uh, housing has improved uh, tremendously and continues to improve with the interim upgrading program, with the uh, uh, main upgrading program, as well as selective on block redevelopment schemes. Um, the, the, the recent uh, public housing flats uh, look more like um, private condominiums now. Um, the provision of uh, uh, um, jobs close to homes, um, if we look at this list of the new towns, uh, you'll find that on the uh, right-hand column, uh, something like 1.4 million units of uh, flats, and uh, with the land use kind of mix, um, almost 20% going to commercial industry and uh, institutional, meaning that you have uh, the uh, job opportunity, uh, opportunities really close to close to home. Uh, integrative kind of land use, um, and you can see there uh, uh, a circle of about um, 1.5 kilometers or, or, um, with the MRT station in the middle. Um, very green in greater detail. Um, but what's more important, I think, um, is uh, besides this integrative um, or integration of uh, land use planning and transport planning, is the balancing of supply and demand. Um, we can build roads, we can build um, highways, but um, it's never enough. So uh, we, hunt, we harness technology um, and we try to also manage demand by uh, managing car usage and car ownerships. So as early as 1975, we implemented area license scheme, which is like a congestion charge uh, that you have in London. Um, in 1990, we have this thing called a uh, certificate of entitlement. We also have a tax system which makes cars, car ownership probably one of the most expensive in the world. Um, we have electronic road pricing uh, in 1998, and now it's totally uh, electronic. Um, other things like green link determining system, uh, system et cetera, et cetera. But I think in the 80s, we, we begin to uh, focus more and more on urban design and uh, public realm. And elsewhere, I've written that uh, um, our, our public space could be described as an evolving layer that is seen as re resolving a consciousness of an Asian statehood, contemporary global aspiration and influence, and more than in any other democratic Asian city or country, state-sanctioned and promoted, coordinated, and staged planning and design. Um, a mouthful, but um, that's what we are really stage planning and, uh, and, and design. Um, in this series of uh, pictures here, you see the kind of um, public space which are associated with different um, agendas from housing, business, uh, green spaces, conservation, and the transportation system. And very quickly, this is what we got from uh, the colonial period. And uh, with the housing agenda, we what you see in orange are the public space that uh, associated with it. Here is uh, a 
pedestrianised um, street within the housing scheme in the city itself. Uh, again, the orange ones are on the first story. The uh, dark orange ones are on the upper stories. And the most recent one still under construction is the, carrying, the, the, the extension of um, public realm all the way um, on the sky decks. And this is a 50-story um, housing scheme in the middle of the city. Park connectors, another public space system, um, uh, currently about half completed, more than 100 kilometers of it, and uh, extending into the city. And here are the systems, both the green ones and the, and the brown ones. And another form of public space associated with this um, uh, land sales program that the, the government has, uh, being in control of 90% of the land it has, uh, every uh, tool it has in, uh, to, to, to make sure that developers, developers follows its uh, urban design stipulations and it's now become very, very sophisticated, um, going to uh, three-dimensional um, uh, things like this. Finally, let me just um, flash through these slides to say that um, conservation has also produced another layer of uh, public space that you can see here conservation and uh, development of new build and elsewhere also in this system um, and and the introduction of MRT has also introduced another whole layer and multi-faceted layer actually multi-level layer of uh, public space which now if you telescope them together uh, you see quite a uh, well a system of public space that is now taking form um, thank you